Good evening, everybody. I'm Cindy DeFilippo, Daniel Webster Council's Family Engagement Coordinator, and welcome to the membership workshop. Tonight, we're gonna to be talking about um, the new flyer request form and some flyer best practices, as well as some membership training. So when folks approach your membership table, you will have a better idea of how to interact with people and um, when they ask about scouting and how to um, recruit those people into your unit. So welcome to everybody and we're going to get started and guys feel free to dive in if you have any questions. Welcome, welcome. And I like to show pictures. These are actually pictures from a few of our groups here because this is what we all do this for, right, is the kids. And that's what I always like to remind myself. Um, I'm also a, a unit uh, leader as well with a troop. And, you know, it all comes down to the kids having fun and that we're, we're doing this for the kids in our groups. And we, um, that's what makes it all fun, right? Keep it simple and make it fun. So join scouting events. Um, this ties into our flyer requests. And before we jump into that, I just wanna put it out there that we are asking units to submit their joint scouting request by August 26, which is pretty much exactly a month from today, just about. Um, and, and we just want to have you submit your request so that way we can provide you with all the tools and resources that you need in plenty of time for those events that are coming up really soon. I know a lot of us, school starts pretty much at the end of August. Some of us start before Labor Day. I know my kids do, and they're not we're all not hugely excited about that. Um, so it's coming up really, really fast. So when you submit your joint scouting events, you can actually do that on the membership and marketing hub. And there is a um, submit um, your event and flyer request link. And when you click on that, you put in all your information and then you'll see there'll be um, questions about your joint scouting events. But now, Brand new, breaking news. We now can take advantage of the entire back of the flyer. And I'm gonna show you a sample of that in a minute. So we'll have the same um, images for the front of the flyer. It's pretty much the same that we had last year. And then on the back, you'll have all this real estate to add more information. So that way families can get a clearer picture of what we're all about. And in addition to that, you can add three more events to that flyer. So that way folks, number one, can see um, the awesome stuff that your unit has coming up in the calendar. And number two, it gives them an idea of a few more events that they could join and check out if they can't make it to your joint scouting night. Um, also new is the units can request yard signs through the flyer request form. So that way we can be sure that the appropriate amount of yard signs and stakes are also available for you. And at the moment, we are asking uh, for folks that are local to pick up the flyers and yard signs on Nettles Porch. And if you're unable to make the trip to Manchester, we will start, we're more than happy to work out either meeting in the middle or coming up for a visit at one of our unit meetings and bringing the, um, you know, what you need to you as well. So just have to make sure you plan out plenty of time. We're asking like really 10 days in advance for these requests at the least. Um, because you want to make sure you get the flyers if you're distributing in a school. You want to get those flyers in the school probably a week or two in advance because sometimes admins don't add flyers to mailboxes um, until like the Friday, you know, that Friday of that week, or maybe they do it on a Monday. So you want to make sure you get those flyers in the schools in plenty of time to promote for that event. Therefore, backdating when you request those flyers as well. So here's a sample. I blocked out some of the information just because this does get recorded and shared. So I didn't think this person would want their information shared everywhere. Um, so this would be the back of the flyer, which is super exciting. Of course, we're going to do join Cub Scouts, join Scouts BSA, join, you know, um, our crew, our post, whatever, um, you know, unit, we can tailor it to any unit. And then we can change that blurb here to describe uh, what the program is all about. And then, you know, we can welcome, um, we're welcoming boys, we're welcoming girls, we're welcoming all youth, kindergarten through fifth grade uh, in the case of Cub Scouts. And then in this section would be kind of your general, this would be your joint scouting night um, and all that information there, get a sneak peek of what we have to offer, right? 
And then um, join uh, Cub Scout Pack 106. Um, so that's the specific pack information. And then they listed their usual meeting dates and times, which I think is really important because that's how a lot of our families are making their decisions, right? If this is even gonna fit into their schedule. So speaking of which, um, while we're talking about dates and times, please make sure that you're updating your unit pins to reflect the days and times that your unit um, meets because that is definitely um, gonna be a deciding factor. People may register for your unit on the spot if it's a time and date that works for them, but they won't know that unless you list it on your BSCO pin. Um, and then of course you have questions, contact us. So there's a clear, there's clear contact information here with their website. You can add your Facebook page link, um, you know, and, and any, uh, any information that you think would be helpful. And then at the bottom, it's, hey, sign up and join us for these fun events. And these are the three upcoming events that this particular unit has. Um, and it can, and you know, they listed even um, the council events. We have Scout Day at Fisher Cats coming up on um, September 3rd, I Blast, and then they have their own unit event, Apple Picking at Carter Hill. So you can even utilize council events, especially if you don't have a lot of events planned coming up you know, um, schedule in some adventure days at Granite Base Camp as well. Those will be starting up every Saturday um, this fall after Labor Day. So you can even put that, you know, one of those Saturdays in there as well as an event. And then you have our usual disclaimer at the bottom too. And so speaking of those join scouting nights, just really quick, because we do have another workshop that does um, go through join scouting nights. But the key to making those joint scouting night events successful is really the pre-planning. And really in general, the success of your unit is all about pre-planning, right? That's why you do a program planning night, you know, in June or July even to plan your year in scouting. It's all about really having your plan laid out for the year when it comes to programming and fundraising. So this model, which is available on the membership and marketing hub, it's actually called the Join Scouting Night Unit Playbook. Um, you really want five stations that will give parents and guardians the information that they need about scouting to get them signed up on the spot and provide everything they need to know, including when the first meeting is and who the leaders are and you know all that scouting lingo that is really foreign to these new families. So we suggest the sign up night stations be a welcome and a sign in so that you're collecting their contact information. What you do, what, what does your unit do? What are, what are you all about? Um, that would also be, you know, a place where maybe you have one sheets on little photos of all your leaders and explaining what each other leaders do, what they're in charge of. Um, and then station three, you'd want um, your registration station um, have some paper forms, but also have your QR code to your Be a Scout pin so folks can really register online right at your event. And then station four is checkout. So if they are doing paper applications or if they're leaving for the night and maybe want to take away more information, you have folks complete the applications. You know, you can do payment right then and there. And then if folks aren't registering on the spot, you give them more information. You give them an invite maybe to your next meeting. Um, you know, bring a buddy card, something like that, or invite them to the next event you have coming up. And then station five is a den or patrol leader Q&A. So maybe you have um, a, a scout from each den or each patrol, um, or you have your older scout stationed there to answer some of the kids' questions um, and even some of the parents' questions. Um, really important because, as you guys know, there's lots of questions when it comes to signing up for something new. So we're going to talk about, you know, manning a membership table. And these are just um, some visuals here. So with the base camp um, canopy, this is actually a setup um, at a mobile base camp event. And you can see um, over here on the left is a bunch of flyers. And those usually include like if FOS is going on at the time, we have FOS uh, pamphlets. Um, there was golf tournament pamphlets as well. And then you would see these flyers that you see over on the right-hand side of the page. It's actually a two-sided flyer. One side promotes Granite Base Camp, 
which is open to all kids. They don't have to be registered scouts. And then on the other side, it promotes joining scouting. Um, and these are going to be available in both mobile base camps. And if folks reserve like the archery, you know, the standalone archery unit or a um, or the soccer darts or something like that, we also have bins that will have basically our membership bin. And you will have flyers, the QR code for the mobile, you know, for the participation form. Um, you know, uh, if there's an upcoming event, you'll have flyers for that, like the spectacular, for example, and iBlast, uh, and so on. So you'll have everything you need to give information to um, interested folks and to invite people into scouting. So as you can see here, there was like the fishing for adventure flyer um, when we had that event. Um, this was at the end of the event, but we had a lot, um, a lot of giveaways that were kind of placed in the middle of the table, like um, the tumbler cups. We had a few T-shirts, um, keychains, things like that. Um, and then you can even frame some of your own flyers or visuals. We have extra frames in the mobile base camp. You can frame some of your own visuals and leave those on the table as well. The tablecloth is in the mobile base camp too, so we have a branded tablecloth. And then you would have a membership, a happy membership outgoing person here, or maybe two people stationed there ready to answer questions. Um, we also have these really cool um, photo prop frames and the kids love these. And they're great because they also include the QR code. It's a working QR code that goes to the Daniel Webster Council Be a Scout pin as well. And those are in the mobile base camps too, and they're available upon request as well. So here's the good stuff. A lot of people say, uh, well, let's not skip over that. A lot of people say, well, I don't know what to say when people, what do I say when people come to the table, right? What, what kind of things do I say? Well, this sample script is actually, uh, we have a three ring binder that goes out with all our physical elements. So it's our membership binder. And in that binder has, the mobile base camp standard operating procedures. And um, at the last page of that is the sample script. And so you have the operating procedures, which um, talks all about the mobile base camp, how to set it up, how to break it down, best practices, all of the above. And it's really not a long document, which is good too. It's like a win, win, win. <laughs> and then you have the sample script and you can even take the sample script out and kind of leave it by your side. And basically it helps you start the conversation. I don't ever, you know, suggest someone really reading from a script, right? No one wants to seem unnatural. And all our leaders know about the program and they especially know about their program, but this is just something to think about and to, um, you know, help practice how that conversation would go. So when you're with the mobile base camp or the standalone archery unit or soccer darts, um, for example, when I'm in, when I'm with the mobile base camp, I love to say, welcome to the Daniel Webster Council mobile base camp. It's our scouting on the go unit. We bring scouting all over the Granite State for families like yours to enjoy. If you'd like to participate in any of our fun adventures today, please have your adult scan this QR code, which will have the QR code framed there. And that's available in, um, with both the mobile base camps and in our membership bins. And you can point to it so they know what you're talking about and complete the waiver. Don't worry, it only takes two minutes. Um, and while you're filling that out, have you heard about scouting, right? Because let's not assume that folks know about scouting. We actually had a lot of people answer, no, I don't, I don't really know much about scouting or, oh, my brother was in scouting, but I don't know much else, right? So if yes, there's, there's a prompt there. If yes, you'd say, awesome, enjoy the activities. Tell your friends all about how much you enjoy scouting, right? You don't really need to go through the whole spiel about scouting if, they, if they're already involved in scouting. If no, you can um, you know, talk about your unit and that scouting is now open to all youth starting in kindergarten. You can join at any time and you can hand them the flyers that are available that, that uh, we just showed you the, vis the visual of. Um, on this flyer, you'll find information for beascout.org. That's where you can find a unit near you. You can scan the QR code, enter your zip code and a list of units with their contact information will appear. You can visit a few units without any obligation to join. And once you decide to register, the unit leader can walk you through the process. 
The other side of this flyer is information about the Granite Base Camp, which offers day camps and programming for all youth, and you don't have to be a scout. So it kind of gives them a brief synopsis of what we have to offer, right? Without overwhelming them too much, I think. And then if they are just, if they're hanging out and listening, you know, if you'd like to register in a scouting unit, unit near you today, I can help you do so online. And if you do so today, you can take home a fishing pole or a scout handbook, which are all in the mobile base camps as well, for free. Would you like me to walk you through our easy online registration? So do you see how you're kind of moving through the steps and then you're kind of closing the sale, so to speak, like we, like we talk about in, in sales speak, right? You're kind of presenting them with your product and then finding a way to wrap around and see if, you can, if they can join that day. If they wanna join, then, uh, and they wanna join your unit, you're gonna wanna navigate to your beascout.org pin, and then you can register them directly online into your unit that day. If, um, um, if they do join, then of course, thank them, right? Thank you for joining Scouting. Our next meeting or event is blank. You let them know when to come. See you then. If, um, if they join a unit where they live, because obviously if you're with the mobile base camp, not everyone's from that area, you want to thank them. Thank you for joining Scouting. The unit leader will be in touch with you with the meeting and event details soon, because they'll get a notification that they'll have someone new that registered for their unit through BS Scout. If they don't want to register, ask them if you can add them to your contact list, and so you can reach out to them later. Then add them to your invitation manager in my.scouting. If they seem rushed, really rushed, or really not interested, and they participate in the activities, we'll actually have their contact information anyway, and they'll be getting a survey about if they enjoyed the mobile base camp and if they're interested in learning more about scouting. If they click yes, they'll be entered into a queue to learn more about scouting. If they click no, they'll be removed from our contact list. Cindy, do you have a sign-up sheet for each person that comes in? Is that how you identify these people? Yes, thanks Elaine for asking that. So we have a participation form, which is mandatory because it is a liability waiver as well. And it's a photo release. Um, so that form, we um, definitely highly encourage folks to do that digitally. So there's a QR code that you will find um, framed in the mobile base camps and in the membership kits. Um, but if it's not framed in there for whatever reason, sometimes the frames broke or it rains and people throw stuff out or whatever the case, it is in that membership binder um, in one of the last pages. It's like a uh, eight by 11 and you can bring it out in the plastic covering or you can frame it in one of the frames available in the membership bin as well. Um, they just scan the QR code and it's literally a two second question. Um, it's just like name, ages, and email, and phone number, and that's basically it. Um, so um, it really is very quick. And then that gets put into our, um, our leads management system that we have now, and um, where it, it indicates to us that they're visiting the mobile base camp. And then we send them that survey, um, you know, let us know your thoughts about the mobile base camp. And then um, it will say something like, you know, would you like to learn more about scouting? Would you like to learn more about Granite Base Camp? And then it gets put into those queues. So um, that way, you know, we're not losing anybody that experiences scouting through these um, activities. Well, you do if they don't have a phone, right? Yeah, so if they don't have a phone, good news is that we actually just um, got two iPads and mobile hotspots, and we are just waiting for the screen protectors and the cases, you know, all that to make, you know, want to make sure we protect them. Um, and those will be available in the mobile base camp. So if folks don't have phones or don't want to use their phone, that will be available. There are also hard copies of the partition participation forms in the oh. membership bins as well. But we highly, highly discourage the paper forms because um, we um, are, you know, we'll be asking the volunteers to enter that information. So that's a lot of data entry for folks to do. It's really much easier um, to have folks enter it in digitally. So even if you have to use your phone with their information, 
Um, if you don't mind doing that, that's another way to do that as well. Um, but we will have the iPads and at least the mobile base camps. Uh, right now, we don't have enough technology um, to, to put them with um, our other individual units, but um, um, hopefully folks will you know, be able to utilize their mobile de devices that they have. I know it doesn't always work out that way, but we do have a backup, a backup plan. <laughs> Um, Jimmy, is and, there any way we can get like one of the nice yard signs with that QR code so it can deal with the weather? Um, yeah. So it would have the QR code on it because the drift best when we went through that rain, <laughs> that kind of got ruined or if it's in that plastic um, right. protector, the sun reflects it just enough. That's you know, true. It goes through a lot. So I was saying that, you know, if you had those, not the plastic ones for this joint scouting, but like a poster board material that can deal with the weather, kind of like the same thing with that squared, scout me in, take your picture type of thing, that type of material. Yeah, um, I'll definitely look into that. That's a good point. And maybe uh, we do have a laminator too at the office, so I could probably laminate a few things too. I know that's still reflective a little bit, but. Um, so even if it's on a, you know, uh, you know, 10 by 11 kind of car like that, that can nicely set up there. And it just, it's more presentable than the piece of paper. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, poor Brian, he keeps getting kicked out of the meeting. <laughs> He's joining again. Um, yeah, that's a good um, suggestion, Josh. I'll definitely uh, work on that. Um, um, so yeah, so we'll have their contact information. And then, um, and then of course, thank them again, even if they don't join or if they're not interested in our little, um, you know, and in, in learning more about us, you know, thank you for visiting. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the ranges, enjoy the Gaga ball um, and have them enjoy the activities. Um, now, are there any questions about interacting with, with public and, and interacting with, with uh, prospective families? No, because you guys are pros, that's why. I do find from a couple of the activities that we've done, Rip Fest was one of them. When you're doing the mobile base camp and all the kids are having fun and they come back to the table, you know, and they always like to say thank you or whatever. Say, well, if you like that, then you can hand them a fly. I said, check mm -hmm. this out. You're going to have just as much fun. It's a great step into saying, hey, if you like that, come check these out. It's just a simple, easy way to say, hey, there's more to it. So it's a great way to hand out those flyers. Yeah, absolutely. That is a very good point. Usually the kids have so much fun, they come back or they get in line again, or they say, hey, I loved that. And it is, it's a great, you know, the, the great thing about these physical tools, like the mobile base camps, the archery units, the soccer darts, anything that you take out at these events is it's a conversation starter, right? So it, it really is a, a casual way to open up that conversation about, hey, you know, we get to do some of this fun stuff in scouting and, um, you know, come to our next meeting. And at, at our next meeting, we're going to, um, you know, learn how to whittle, right? Or um, the next meeting, we're going to uh, go to Granite Base Camp um, for an adventure day and you can shoot real, you know, you can shoot a real bow and arrow, right? On Granite, um, at, at a base camp um, or shoot BBs too. Um, so it really gets them excited about the opportunities that they have in scouting for sure. And you can kind of um, have that help you start that conversation. And using the Granite Base Camp information too is a great way to, if you have those scouts or the parents that are kind of hesitant, say, well, you know, here's another one, try, try going to the base camp, it, you know, the, they have every weekend, they have activities going on, take advantage of it. And that might be the next thing they need is because, you know, we, we do know those families that need two or three tryouts um, to see everything that's available. And granted, base camp, a mobile base camp is just a tip of the iceberg of what's available. But if you can offer to say, hey, if you can't make it to Granite base camp at Camp Carpenter, come to our pack or the troop, you know, we're doing these type of things, very similar. You know, so it's a great way to toss them. Now, if you're in the keen direction, not everyone's going to want to drive the uh, base camp necessarily. So yeah. that's what you offer. 
the unit stuff. Yeah. So it's a two-way street of utilizing the base camp is just a generic way to show what scouting is um, at certain times of the year, but every unit's going to be unique. So those units that are going to be using the base camp um, model, keep it personal to yourselves if you're running it at a unit level. Say, hey, if you, we're going to be at base camp or, hey, if you want to try more scout stuff like Gaga Ball and all this stuff, go to base camp. We'll be there on this day. If you can't and don't want to drive that far, check out Thursday night. We're having our pack meeting. We're doing pumpkin carving or whatever it may be. You know, but it's a great way to say, hey, that's just a tip. Check this out. This will be another great event that you will definitely love, love. And, and definitely end it with make sure you bring your whole family. This is a family program. Uh, dads and moms will have just as much fun. Start them, start making the memories by attending this event or this meeting, you know, because that's what parents want. We want our kids to have great time and our parents, we want those memories that go along with it. Yeah, and speaking of, I know uh, Manchester isn't um, central to everybody, but they do have online workshops, for example, um, you know, merit badge workshops that are online um, and other opportunities too. So um, that is an option too. Um, if you don't have a lot of merit badge counselors or if your kids wanna learn more about a topic, they do offer that online as well. And you know, uh, things like the Spooktacular where units can camp out, it's a great opportunity to check out Granite Base Camp and Camp Carpenter because you can make the trip and spend the weekend, um, um, which uh, we do have a weekend event coming up too, which. I will talk about next, but here's the membership and marketing hub. If you don't know it, know it, love it, bookmark it, screenshot it, whatever you need to do. <laughs> um, the Daniel Webster Council's membership and marketing hub has all the tools, all the resources um, there for you to recruit and retain your families in your units. If you don't see something that you think you could really, uh, units could really use, please, 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 please let me know. I would love to here, what else we can do to help you guys out when it comes to resources. On the hub right now, some of the highlights is that we do have a unit recruiting checklist. And this checklist goes through everything to help a unit be successful, especially this fall. Um, if units complete that checklist and send it to membership at nhscaling.org, they will be entered in for a raffle to win uh, one of the um, cool prizes, one of them being a $50 gift shop to gift shop gift card to the scout shop. Uh, one of them is a free adult at camp and another is um, a family adventure pass. Um, so there'll be three chances to win and, um, and uh, you just have to enter in your completed recruiting checklist. Um, there are bscout.org pin tutorials and they're really great step-by-step -step video tutorials on the hub. We have our district activities committee calendar and council calendar available on a one sheet where you can just print it out. So that way you have everything there. There's QR codes to those calendars. So as you're doing your um, unit planning for the year, you'll have everything there available for you to plan everything out. And you can schedule in some of those district and council activities as well. It saves you some, some trouble too, because um, you can fill your calendar and you don't have to do all the work all the time. There is a social media guide and then everything you need to know about mobile base camp, including reserving the mobile base camp and our other tools. Our past membership workshops and the registration link for future ones is there as well. And um, you can register your join scouting night and request flyers on the work on the um, hub as well. Um, just a heads up, we are redesigning um, our resources page on the membership and marketing hub. So when you go to the leader resources and downloads, you'll see it'll appear in steps. So step one will be planning. And under that will be all the resources you need to plan a joint scouting night. Step two will be promoting. And under that will be all the resources you need to actually promote your meetings and your joint scouting nights and your events. Step three will be execute. So it'll be what you need to know to really execute certain events. And then step four, follow up, and step five, welcoming, and all those. You'll it'll be a more organized way to really help leaders step by step. These are um, links to the membership workshop recordings and also the national 
uh, membership and marketing recordings as well for um, the, the recordings that they've done so far. Um, this slide deck will also be available under the webinar recordings as well. So you will be able to catch these there too. And save the date. So recruiting university, this is what I was talking about. This is another overnighter uh, camping opportunity for adults at Camp Carpenter. And it is going to be like recruiting workshop central. Um, how to use available tools to you, round table ideas, planning for an event from start to finish, working with schools, getting those relationships going, program planning, and the list goes on. Um, I know Tom Greer joined us. Tom, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Tom is one of the volunteers. Hey, <laughs> I just got back down from GSR. It was kind of crazy up there. Oh Hi, my everybody. gosh. Thank you for joining us. I, I was trying to get on the earlier one too, and that just did not work at all. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I got a puppy that wants to come up. He missed me, so he wants to come up and sit on my lap. And he's <laughs> and he's 90 pounds, so you can please get down, Scott. Get down. <laughs> get down. All right. Um, recruiting University is um, pretty much exactly what Cindy said. Um, go scouting without, um, go camping without, get down. Get down. Sorry. Uh, camping without the scouts. Um and uh, potluck dinner for Friday, uh, Saturday night. Everybody brings their own uh, favorite stuff. I've done this with my troop um, a couple of times and it turned out really fantastically. Um, what we plan on doing is a lot of interactive um, listening to everybody, best case scenarios. A uh, bunch of the people that are gonna be speaking actually had, uh, had their units increase in size during COVID. Um, so we've got a lot of ideas. We're listening to a lot of ideas. We're going to get everybody really psyched and fired up to get out and have a super um, fall recruiting season. And um, we've got the tools also. We've got our. Oh, you went on mute. Oh, there you go. If you got any ideas, things that you'd like to hear or see, uh, please let me know. Um, let me put in my email address here. Uh, where is this being held? Oh, it's uh, April, uh, August 20th at Camp Carpenter. Oh, Carpenter, thank you. Yep, yep. And if I can steal away Chikorawa from um, mobile, uh, Granite Base Camp, I will. But for right now, we're going to be over at uh, Sunapee. Uh, classes will be in, um, in Manning Hall. Um, there's going to be a lot of multimedia stuff, um, a lot of stuff that people don't necessarily always see from my scouting. Um, and if we have to move into the main dining hall, we'll do that too. Uh, we've had a lot of interest. Um, we've been talking it up for a while. Uh, I'm really excited about it and I'm really nervous about recruiting right now. So is there a cost? We can do. Excuse me? Is there a cost? Nope. Okay. Thank you. Zero. Zero, please let people know. Um, I was working up at uh, camp at GSR uh, this weekend or this week, and a lot of people are interested um, and are getting around to signing up. And one more question. Uh, what, sure. are, what time does it start? It starts at, uh, well, registration and getting everything in starts at 7, 7.30, and yeah. the classes themselves will start at 8.30. Okay. And then Sunday is going to be basically, uh, uh, did we miss anything? Do we want to go over anything as well as a big debrief? Uh, white I call them white table round, uh, white board round tables, uh, where we write everything down on the, on the white boards. Um, and it's a really great exchange of ideas. Anything else from anybody? I added the registration link in the chat. So for anyone- Oh, thank you so much. Um, it's a great opportunity to go, uh, you know, Tom, you know, spearheading this thing pretty much. And I think it will be, a, I have a feeling hopefully Tom, this will be a continuously annually, yearly thing, you know, growing because right now recruiting is going to be a big thing coming out of that whole pandemic and we're getting back on the ladder and climbing up again. So if you have unit um, membership people, you know, their membership uh, coordinator or whatever their term want to call it, 
it's a great opportunity, but it's really for any leaders that want to help build their unit or help others. And I'm sure Tom and everyone that's going to be attending will appreciate anyone and everyone from all different directions of the state. Exactly. And I am hoping that this will be a uh, like a, a end of summer kickoff, get everybody fired up. It's before um, scouting gets crazy in the fall and it's right after camp winds down. But unfortunately, we've got a lot of people who do late summer vacations and things like that, too. Um, so we're hoping it's going to be really big and a lot of a lot of people will show up. and We'll get a lot of great ideas and have the natural benefit of getting a whole lot of new scouts. Uh, the information is still on the council um, calendar as well. So if you don't um, copy the link, um, every yep. district commissioners or chairman, you know, you um, put it on your Facebook pages. I know it, I've seen it a few times on the Facebook pages, but, you know, and email it out in e-blast saying, hey, it's up there. We want to build scouting in the 603 uh, <laughs> this year, next year and beyond to where we used to be. And uh, this is a great kicker to get it going. Yeah, thank you to Tom and, and your team for putting this together and really spearheading it and, um, and getting it out there. And it, it really is going to be beneficial because it's it's all led by volunteers and experienced leaders. And it'll be a great opportunity for all of us to work as a team to really bring membership back to, um, you know, back to growing and back to where we need it to be. Um, we need to recruit over 1,000 scouts uh, by December 31st. Um, that's the deficit we have right now. Um, it is very doable. Um, we recruited about 900 last year, I believe, from May to December. Um, so it's very, very doable, but we really need all hands on deck and everybody excited about this new scouting year and really working together. You know. Anyone has questions, um, you know, um, you can always email membership at nhscouting.org. You can also do support at nhscouting.org. That's where all our questions get filtered into and they get, um, you know, put in the right person's hands to, to answer your questions or to um, help you with the request. And of course, the Membership and Marketing Hub and the Recruiting University is on the homepage of the Membership and Marketing Hub and you can register through there as well. Um, the Family Den Pilot uh, Memorandum um, of Understanding Agreement, or whatever you'd like to call it, um, is due August 4th. So if you have a family pack and you are interested in doing the Family Den Pilot Program, which means dens can now be co-ed, um, you can also um, find that MOU on the Membership and Marketing Hub right on the homepage. It's right next to the Recruiting University information. And uh, if you have more questions about that, definitely let me know. Um, mm -hmm. The Fall Recruiting Kickoff Membership Workshop, which yes, it's different than the Recruiting University, is August mm -hmm. 25th. This workshop will be focusing more on the application process, um, the, the Hub's new format, and really having a tour of the Membership and Marketing Hub. Um, incentives that are um, going to be live and coming up and talking a little bit about adopt a school. We're really encouraging all our units to adopt a school in their community this year to really um, foster a better relationship with the schools in their communities. And joint scouting dates are due August 26th. I'd love to hear your ideas, your comments, your questions anytime. Can if you have ideas or thoughts right now, I'd love to hear them. And I just want to thank you all for continuing, continuing to be part of our membership team. It really means a lot. Does anyone have any questions? I know a few folks joined a little bit later. Um, I know it was hard to join from GSR and, for, and I know there's storms out there. So thank you for joining. And, um, and hanging out. If you, have, if you have questions or any comments, or if you think you missed something, I can um, go back over a few things too. Um, I have uh, email address and phone number in the chat. So if anybody needs to re wants to reach out to me about Recruiting University, um, any input, um, anything that you've done already that really works, we're really looking forward to anything and everything we can do. 
All right. Thank you. Yeah, definitely share your ideas. I think a lot of us keep our ideas and our and our methods like this little secret, right? We have like this little locked box of secrets. But really, we're all working together as a team, right? The more families that we get into scouting, no matter if they're in your own unit or not, it's a win for everybody, right? Because the more folks we have in scouting, the more we can fundraise and supply with better uh, physical tools as well as other resources, right? Improve our camps, improve our programs. And then that really gets the word out so that you're able to invite more and more families into your own individual units and your communities as well. So it's really a win-win when we all work together to recruit, whether it's for your own unit, for your district, or outside your district or outside your unit. It's really a win for everybody. Um, you know, keeping our little scouting secrets sometimes. You know, I know a lot of us have friendly competition. I know, I know we have friendly competition with some units as well. Um, but it's so important to work together and say, you know what, this really worked for me. You know, I can help you guys out. I can show you what I did. I can, uh, here, do you want, do you want to use my flyer? Right. Um, you know, here's some of the resources I use. This is where I found this all really important conversations for all of us to be having with each other and sharing that information. Yeah. Cindy, um, just one more thing I think about when I hear all that, right. Is, uh, talk about friendly competition, but also working together. Um, coordination of event nights is important, right? So if the units talk, then they won't have their event nights on the same night and the families are gonna to get to shop around and okay, maybe you won't get that scout in your unit, but having the variety and the choice, you have a better chance of capturing mm -hmm. that scout in one of the units. Absolutely. I yeah. think that's a great idea, Tom. And I'm thinking maybe you could get a district commissioner to, to come up, just ask everyone to submit their their sign up night and then pr print it out for everybody. So, you know, you're not going to be con uh, conflicting with someone else. Yeah. And in, in Bedford, uh, yeah, in Bedford, I mean, the PACs, I'm always on the lookout for who's the leaders of the other PACs. And uh, yeah. we try to, we used to, you know, before COVID, uh, we had a joint flyer and every pack had a different night. So yeah, that's kind of exactly what I'm getting at. Um, yeah, yeah the, the commissioners can help, um, but if we all just keep our eyes and ears open and meet new people and network at council events, there's a real good chance we can uh, you know, do a better job. Yep, yep. Yeah, thank hey, you for gre that. Greetings everybody from Sunapee District. I just <laughs> chimed in late. I'm down actually in West Harwich down the Cape on vacation. <laughs> I get uh, it. But how you doing? I uh, I like the, the interaction here tonight. It's uh, it's all good stuff. I I think you know our tasks may be in a silo, but certainly our scouting needs to be all over the place. We can't uh, you know silo our thoughts. We're gonna share it with all the different groups we belong with, because no one of us knows as much as all of us. It's a great great to be here. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Kevin, and thanks for joining us on vacation. Oh, Kevin said he was going to be on vacation. I'm so, I, I can't believe you joined us on your vacation. Well, <laughs> Thank you know, you. nothing better to do on a Thursday night. No, I know, yeah. I know you missed my voice. I'm sure that's what it was. <laughs> I just had to try Zoom from my phone. I never tried it from the phone before. Uh, you're sounding great, so I'm glad it's working. Yeah, thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? I'd love, I love I love all this feedback and thank you guys for for sharing you know what you have shared because it's it's so important and you know uh, kind of working again off of what Tom had mentioned and Elaine too is you know um, I know it doesn't work for everybody but maybe for some of our smaller units it might make sense to do a district joint scouting event together right and pairing up with multiple units in the district, right? And having stations for each unit and having the district commissioner there or someone from the district team, you know, helping coach and helping navigate that. Um, and, um, and, you know, really using all our resources. I think a lot of us, you know, finding the volunteers is tough, right? I mean, that's, that's the message I've been hearing. And let's not be afraid to team up. You know, if there's another, larger unit nearby where you guys can combine on some events, where you guys can com combine and do recruiting events together, you know, 
there's nothing wrong with that. I think a, a lot of us feel like, oh, we got to do this alone and I don't have enough people and what am I going to do? You know, let's use our resources wisely. Let's reach out. Let's work together as a team and make it work for everybody. I'm really glad, Cindy, that you have the participation form now because we did exactly that in Monadnock District. Um, I can't remember, it was, I think it might've been last fall. There was a home show and we got the granite base camp set up and everything. Mm -hmm. The problem is we didn't get the sign, we didn't get the people because yeah. they didn't have to sign up. So I can't tell you how many kids had wonderful times and then the parents never followed through. And it's then like, they no. leave. Yeah, they forget they about it. Exactly. Yeah. We had that, yeah. it was so frustrating. Yeah. I know, and that's so hard. And it's like we all kind of live and learn, right? Like you go through these steps and you yep. think you have everything planned out and then it's like wait a minute we're not getting all the information we could get here yeah you know, that and, would be helpful right and we did try to do that because as you know we're we're probably the smallest district in the whole state and we are almost all small units so we just mm -hmm. basically had a list of all of our units and what towns they were so and then the contact people and if we that's had a great had idea information form we would have been able to utilize it better. So I think that's a great, great change for the better. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that, Elaine. Thank you for that feedback. It really is something very simple. And, you know, a lot of folks, uh, not a lot of folks, but I think some folks at first were a little nervous, like, oh, is this going to turn people away because we're having them fill out something. But if you guys think what you bring your kids and your nieces and nephews or your grandkids to, you know, trampoline parks, right? You got to fill out, like, you got to, like, like give up your firstborn to like jump on a trampoline, right? And nobody goes in and complains about a waiver for a trampoline park. You just know you have to do it, right? Um, and, you know, um, you know, even for laser tag, you got to fill out, you know, a waiver form, right? So it, and this, and ours is so much easier. It's really just like three quick things. And we capture all the information that we need and they check off a box as their signature. So they don't even have to sign, you know, physically sign. So we make it really easy. And, um, and then it allows us to uh, contact that person and to get feedback from that person too. And to also help you guys out because we're sending them out to, you know, the, the units that are close to them. Um, and, and it really, we were noticing, you know, as I was following up with units after they, after they would utilize the mobile base camp, you know, last year, Oh, well, like, did you gather information? Oh, no, well, no, we didn't gather any, but um, they're interested. They're going to come to a meeting. Well, how are they going to come to a meeting, right? And and it was, you know, it, we all kind of put our heads together, like, hmm, what can we do here? And I, I do think that, that, you know, that will be a little bit more helpful. And it helps us see how many people are utilizing, um, you know, these tools. And in addition to that, um, you know, how many scout age kids that that we are directly recruiting because they had an experience with the mobile base camp. And that's all important information for us as we, you know, seek support from um, our communities and outside resources as well. It always seems like, you know, we add things to, you know, maybe add some complications, but really adding things so we can add more support for our volunteers and our in our units. That's really what it does because it just gives us data where we can say, hey, we're reaching this many kids, you know, with this mobile base camp, um, you know, um, and folks wanna wanna support it more because we're reaching these kids and the events are, you know, the activities are free, which is great. So we can get out into our communities with underserved families and bring them activities that they normally wouldn't see. So it really is a community outreach project and a really great way to, uh, it's a different way to um, execute really great community service because we're getting out to kids that normally wouldn't experience these activities too. Yeah, and that's why we also ask for everyone to have their pin up to date too, because there's our units out there, including districts, unit commissioners that are running mobile base camp like we did at Ripfest. I spent hours looking up everyone within Merrimack, Nashua, and those type of units, finding out what nights they meet. It helps say, all right, this family comes up to the mobile base camp, say, hey, um, 
Tuesday nights are available. Well, these are the two units you want to see. These are the schools here that's available. So having that information up on the your pin up to date. A lot of us that are helping at the Boulder Base Camp, if we're running it and sending people to you, you know, <laughs> somebody has to be at the other end of the line. And so at the unit level, please make sure whoever's going to be the contact through the unit pin or the contact period for your unit, make sure they're aware. Um, those pins should be checked every 24, 48 hours because sometimes those notifications take longer. I had one a couple of days ago and I got the notification seven days after. Um, so whoever the person in the unit that's checking uh, online, you know, interest, they should check every 48 hours. It only takes two seconds to log in to my scouting. Um, and if you're doing a town-wide unit thing, like uh, Tom, you mentioned in Bel Bedford, well, if your unit's meeting Tuesday and the other one meets Wednesday or Thursday, that's a great way to also help if, all right, well, Tuesday, this is your better bet. Well, you, you need some Tuesdays not available, but maybe this unit can. Again, you're, we're benefiting the scouting program. The structure of the program is exactly the same, no matter what unit you go to, just the personality is different. Um, a lot of units, when we go to fall camp, is truck wagon, Klondike's, doesn't matter between a cub or a troop. We're pretty much meeting each other. It's a world of scouting. <laughs> so one way or the other, the structure is exactly the same. So it, there's nothing wrong with, if you don't get that scout, he might not like it necessarily, or he finds out, hey, I got my friends in this unit instead. I want to transfer. There's nothing wrong with the transfer. Um, great way to pitch it to a lot of, in the Nasher era, we have a lot of uh, single parents that are also divorced. It's a great way to them, um, well, their father or mother time, you know. So there's a lot of different opportunities out there, but if those pins aren't up to date, it's very hard um, for a lot of us to send members to you. Um, so please make sure those are up to date. And uh, what Cindy was mentioning about the mobile base camp with the tracking and stuff that helps us in the future to find out, oh, Keen had an event during this weekend and it was a good turnout. That's how we can track to say, hey, we want to make sure we go back like Rip Fest. We did Rip Fest. We want to make sure we get back to that because they had 1600 pre-registered. I don't and we actually saw some of the data, which um, tonight Rick Smith, our district commissioner at the time, typed in a lot of stuff. And Cindy did a lot too, you know, typed in a lot of that information. And I was actually surprised how many from Massachusetts were up, but we got Merrimack, Nashville, all the towns that we wanted to hit. We saw how many families came through. Um, and when we see those type of numbers, we want to make sure, all right, it was a success of hitting those families, that community that we were hitting. Let's plan for next year to make sure we go to those things. Um, up in Centipede, if you have a like a, a balloon fest or any of those type of activities that might be an interest and we can get a mobile base camp up there. We want to be able to track all that information. If units are doing their own uh, recruiting thing, we want to hear about the, the goods and the bads. You know, we want to hear the goods, <laughs> little bads, but you know, all the information is gathered and if we can't get that information from those units we can't uh, figure out how to resolve and go forward and then we can provide it for maybe tom greer for next year for the un um, recruiting university hey these are the issues we've had maybe this will be a topic for next year's recruiting university uh, or hey this worked out well let's bring it to the um, university and bring it to round table so we can have these discussions and spread that same information to all the units so they can take advantage of it Sydney, is there a survey for the people running the mobile base camp? There isn't, but I can definitely. Um, There's some interest for people that yeah. are running so what they found difficult, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I, like I said, I always love feedback. Um, in the last meeting I had, I said, and I mean it, feedback is a gift. Um, some leaders, you know, everyone's so sweet. And when I talk to them on the phone, they're like, well, I don't want to give any criticism, but. I said, no, it's okay. I, the feedback is what we need to succeed, right? I mean, um, it doesn't make any sense for me to keep throwing out certain tools or resources or doing something one way if it's not working for the majority. And, um, or if it is working for the majority, I definitely wanna hear that too. It goes both ways, right? You wanna hear the positive, but we definitely <laughs> wanna hear things that we can change too. And uh, for those of you that don't know, cause we do have some um, new faces, Josh Gallian is actually our volunteer membership committee chair, and we have been working hard trying to form a 
membership committee, a council membership committee, because um, this will really help with recruiting and getting those 1,081 scouts in uh, this year. So if you're interested in joining the membership committee, we still have some, some committee uh, chair positions open and we do have committee member positions open, a lot of membership <laughs> committee um, folks um, that we would love to see from different districts. So um, you can email me at membership at nhscaling.org or you can comment in the chat if you like. Um, but we, um, or you can stay after too. I know Lynn um, had a question that she wanted to ask me afterwards too, but um, if you are on the committee and interested in being on the committee, we're gonna meet really quickly uh, right after this workshop, which we're almost um, uh, done wrapping up. Cindy, I'm sorry, I've got another meeting I have to run to right now. No um, but, uh, yeah, put me wherever you need me on the membership committee. And I'll be Thank there. You. I Thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you okay. so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Tom's everywhere. Tom is one of our range masters too, and he helps us at the mobile base camp. He's all over the place. So um always always thankful for his very scout-like cheerful service. Um, and very thankful for all of you guys for joining me tonight. I, I thought we had some great conversation tonight, and I really appreciate all you all do. I know every email, I always say thank you for all you do, and it sounds like a uh, very scripted response, but I truly, truly mean it. I feel like I can't thank volunteers enough as a fellow volunteer. I know it's not just an hour a week. Uh, we all laugh when we say that. It's like we can't even help it, right? Um, I know everyone's working so hard for these kids and for your units and, um, keep it simple, make it fun. And when you have any feedback at all, please, please, please don't be shy. Um, right now is the time as we're finalizing plans for the fall and gearing up and trying to get all the incentives and tools out there for you. Definitely want to hear more from everybody. Uh, so definitely let us know. And, um, definitely hang on after this meeting so um, we can have a membership committee meeting as well. Are there any other questions or comments before we do wrap up this portion? Uh, so no, you guys, oh, sorry, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So the only thing I'd say, yeah, I gotta, I gotta run as well. Um, but I think great, great content, great, um, you know, dialogue between everybody. You know, obviously, as you've said, we need almost 1,100 members to join. Um, you know, I think anything that everybody can do, you know, collectively or individually, um, will go a long way. So, appreciate the uh, the time and the dialogue with everybody tonight. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I was just going to ask right before you jumped in. Was this helpful? Was this good for you guys? Is this what <laughs> I always like to hear that feedback because. Um, I am happy to do a workshop on any topic that you guys feel uh, we need to have. So definitely let me know. Yep. No, okay. I do have a question for anyone, you know, since you guys are spread out. So coming out of pandemic, a lot of units have struggled, a lot of have. One of the things, maybe like Cindy was just mentioning, any information for future. The units that are struggling, do they have unit coordinators for a new membership coming in? And if they don't, or if they do, is there a training that they're doing or should we provide a training like at the university or at a district level um, to get back on? Because three years ago, that membership stuff is old. We got to stay with the current stuff. Um, anything that's over three years, I've seen a couple of units use things that's over three years old and that's obsolete stuff we shouldn't be using. And that's, you know, after pandemic is the newer stuff. But a lot of units don't know that. Some districts don't know that. But Maybe because we need the training for it. So anyone who would think that uh, membership, it's not really, I don't know if it's actually a committee position anymore. They had a, a different term uh, back in the day, but. Uh, just something when you, you mentioned that Josh is one of the biggest problems we're running into in addition to recruiting scouts is recruiting leaders, getting parents who will step up and be leaders. That's that's why we can't grow because we can't get, we don't have enough leaders to, to, to support it. I mean, we, we had our cub master leading the Weeblows den last year because none of the parents would step up. And that's, that's an ongoing issue. Not, I know it's not only with us, but 
Uh, yeah, I, think I think we could do a whole workshop on that, how to recruit leaders, how to recruit, how to convince parents that they're that being a leader is is valuable to them as well as to their child. And that's one thing that um, I'll be doing at the recruiting university. I'll, um, I got a 15, 20 minute little segment. It, I'm not recruiting kids I'm recruiting the family. If yeah. I can show that the parents are having just as much fun with their kids and having those memories, I have a higher chance of, even if they're in it for a year, after that year, most likely I'm gonna get them as a volunteer down the road. Yep. And slowly trying to work on some of the other ones that have been in the unit for way too long that, hey, let somebody else do it, come up to district or council, we could use your support up there. Keep the fresh legs going, you know? Well, and we know that over time they get burnt out. Tell me about it. <laughs> this yeah. is, you know, I'm in my 35th year. I've done from Tiger to Eagle. Um, I did district for 15 years, went to council, then I went back to local. Uh, John Arico actually used to <laughs> help me out at Massive Basic activities before he's doing what he's doing. Yep. You know, so now I'm an arrowhead and, you know, I do loan scouting. I'm the roundtable commissioner. You know, my one hour a week, I have like four hats from I mean, four uh, different directions. And I think that we're all in the same boat, John. Oh, yeah. And it's been like that since the early 90s. But it, it's, that's yeah. what's so frustrating. That's, I mean, when you want to get out and you can't because if you get out, it's literally going to fold. But that's, then there are the groups out there that are growing and we would like to have them participate in these like recruiting universities. Exactly. Tell us your secret. Yeah, exactly. Stop being selfish. It's not a competition necessarily. It's a nonprofit yeah. <laughs> organization. It's not really a competition. We're all in it or the same program. It's a world of scouting. Yep. But I'm just finding that a lot of units, at least in my area and the ones I've gone to, they don't really have a member coordinator. And it doesn't have to be, it can be somebody that's a assistant den leader that can take it. You know, it's just somebody that coordinates the new members coming in and maybe a, you know, handling the flyers, the stuff that Cindy offered about all these resources. That's the person when you have these unit committee meetings, that's the person you go to to find out. That. Uh, but if so, there's no training, they don't know where to go. Yeah. So, I mean, I have just kind of an idea running around in my head um, and I don't know how to implement it. And, and it's really, you guys are gonna have to think about it too, but you hit it like the nail on the head about having a problem recruiting leaders, especially the PACs, like dead leaders. And I know we have a lot of online training um, and usually every PAC has at least one person that's pretty dedicated, but it's hard for them to take it all on. Yes. You know, we have a, we have a commissioner core, right? And maybe what we need is something like that. Um, experienced people from units um, that would be willing to go to say a pack, right? Say there's a pack that can't get a leader for a weed blows den. Um, maybe we have one night where there's a in that pack, a Weeblow's Den meeting and an outside experienced leader from the council, the committee, the, the commissioners, other units comes to that den meeting and says, hey, I real, you know, you need a, a leader in your den. I realize a lot of you might be nervous about that. Maybe you don't know how to do it. And all, you don't feel like online training is really gonna show you how to do it. So I'm here to spend one meeting and I have a pre-planned activity for you and we're, and I'm going to show you how I run through it with the scouts and I'm going to show you just how easy it is and maybe maybe you can entice more people that way you know partnering up with mentors is yep. usually works pretty well I kind of like that I, I, I think at the truth level they call that learn through your peers yeah that's yep. like that, what you just yeah mean. but uh if the, if the units are small, then you don't have that core to pull from. And that's where I'm hoping uh, I can get some where of the younger scouts that have been in it for 20 years. They're, they're, they're young scouts themselves and moved on. It'd be great yep. to get them to come Call up it. unit uh, district type of thing. That way they can have that resource to do. Yeah. Um, Call it a leadership tiger team. Yeah. yeah. I love that, Tom. And I think that's what we're really trying to accomplish through the membership committee as well is these folks that you know are experienced um that you know have you know have the passion have a little bit of time to mentor folks at the unit district and unit level um you know i would love to add you know i'd love to get to a point where we add a committee that is like a leader training committee right and we have those folks 
send out mentors. Uh, right now, uh, unit commissioners are really great folks to turn to. Um, you know, they're experienced leaders that um, can really, you know, they can come to a meeting, they can come to a committee meeting, decipher what some of the uh, challenges are within the unit and help you resolve those. Um, if you don't know who your unit commissioner is, definitely talk to your district commissioners um, and they can help you out as well. I know we are a little short on unit commissioners too, um, um, but also, um, you know, if uh, that is the case, the district commissioner can try to help. And then if not, you know, that's something we can bring to the membership committee. Um, but we also, as you guys know, do need some more, um, you know, bodies to spread the wealth in the membership committee as well. But that is a great idea. And, and, it, and it goes back to our discussion on really reaching out to surrounding units, right? Reaching out to those surrounding units. You know, maybe you have a 15 minute Zoom or a phone call. Hey, what did you guys do this week? How did that work out? What was six, what worked, what didn't work and what will you continue? Right, those are three important questions. What well, worked, really, what didn't work? What really great thing too is if you can get, attend a PAC meeting or a DEN and go to those DEN meetings, don't even have the parents talk. Have that leader come in and ask the kids, brag about all the activities they've done because sometimes that just inspires the adult. Hey, I can do that. Um, having the kid peer pressure those adults sometimes do that help. Well, yeah, one of the things that worked in our troop is um, when they needed to like talk to the parents about something or have the parents volunteer, not in our troop, in our pack. We were back in the pack. The den leader would say, um, go grab your parent to all the to all the youth that was there. And the you know, go grab your parent. And my kid would be tugging me. And of course, I was talking to 15 other people <laughs> at the time. And I'm like, you're interrupting me. But it worked every time because they're they're dragging me over. No, my leader needs to talk to you. And they'd say, you know, we need someone to help um, plan the Halloween party. You know, or hey, next week, does or you know, next month, does someone want to lead the den meeting? Um, you know, with this, uh, you know, we're we're gonna work on this activity. Who has an interest in that? Who can lead that? And maybe try to get your adults in a little bit at a time, right? Think about what made you want to join and what made you step up and volunteer. And I know some of us are just that, those people, right? We always, we, we, I kind of think, and I'm like, how did this happen? <laughs> and, you know, here we are, right? Um, but, you know, I know I loved working with the kids and the kids were so excited about about popcorn, right? And so I became popcorn colonel because it was just really fun to work with the kids and I really made it all about the kids. And from there I was the events coordinator because I loved doing the Halloween party and the Pinewood Derby. And little by little, I would ask other parents and say, hey, do you wanna come help me plan the Pinewood Derby? I'm gonna make this little tabletop racetrack. I could really use your ideas. And little by little, get these parents in to help with smaller tasks. And then say, so you know what? You would be really great as a membership chair. You're really outgoing. You like to talk to people. We could really use a membership person to help welcome new families. You know, do you want to give it a try with me? Right? Be that, offer to be the mentor to that person. If you are a den leader right now, try to scope out the adults in the room, see who works well with the kids, who has patience, who has some creative ideas, and say, hey, do you want to co-lead the den with me for a while? And then when you're ready to move on, that person is trained, right? We often want to assign people these big tasks without really offering the mentoring, right? Or kind of forgetting the fact that people aren't as confident in the role as we are, right? We kind of, some of us jump in and we just do our thing. Some of us were lucky enough to have mentors or to watch other people succeed and learn from them. But we can't automatically assume that these adults are gonna feel comfortable just jumping in. So little by little, invite them to do the smaller things and then do that personal ask. The personal ask is key. You know, emails saying, hey, we need leaders to help us out. That often doesn't really work, right? Cause you're going, well, what do they need me to do? How much time am I gonna sign up? What am I giving up here to help out? Go up to that person, that really confident, outgoing person that loves people and say, you know what? You're so great at talking with the new families. Do you think you can help us out, you know, and, and, and maybe welcome some of the new families when, when they come in? 
you know, we have all the materials for you. I can help you out next week. You can see what it's like. You know, all those like really baby steps and um, really try to have, you know, in your committees, co-members, right? Have a co-committee chair, have a secretary with a co-secretary. I know this is wishful thinking, but just keep it in mind, right? So that way when people do move on, you have that good secession planning in place. One of the biggest issues, and, and we all know this, this is what we're talking about, right? One of the biggest issues is that there isn't a secession plan, right? Elaine was saying, people, what if we leave? It's gonna fold. You're right. There are units where when the strong leaders leave and there's no secession planning, those units fold. Yes, we need strong people in place and you need to do it before people get burnt out. I know, laugh Elaine, right? I just see the smiles of people. So before people get burnt out, maybe during the burnout, <laughs> right? Before people get burnt out, before people cross over, before the year before people yeah. cross over, right? Don't get that, don't get that panic rushing moment when you're like, oh my God, six of our leaders are crossing over next year. Now what? Don't do that. Try to really backdate your plans and try to start thinking about those people ahead of time. I have one of my best friends who knows I've always been just obsessed with scouting. I've always had such a great time with my son in scouting, with my family in scouting. So I've always been involved. And at the time we met him because he was my son's den leader in the pack. And he ended up, you know, not being a den leader the next year. And then he, he kind of, you know, he would show up to meetings, but never really um, stepped in as a leader again for a while. And now we're in the troop. And every now and then I would say, hey, why don't you like plan out hiking activity? Because I knew he loved to hike and get outside. Hey, um, oh my gosh, you love fishing. I think the kids will love that. Why don't you plan the next fishing activity? He's an assistant scoutmaster now. He plans these awesome events and he absolutely loves it. And all the kids love it. And he also was elected along with his son uh, to be part of the OA. This was a person who was barely a den leader, okay, back in the day. And little by little, he helped with scouting for food for a couple of years, just helping out organizing, you know, the, um, the door um, tags, right? Then planned an event here or there. Now it took some time, don't get me wrong, but that's what we're saying, right? Think like years and ahead, but years ahead. Now we have an awesome additional assistant scoutmaster who plans these really cool things. And it took some time, a little bit of, a, of convincing, but we have to really have that, that group of folks in mind, right? And really kind of start pinging them here and there. Hey, do you want to lead this activity next week? Can you lead um, a den meeting coming up? You know, they can take the youth protection training, you know, have your two deep leadership obviously available, all that fun stuff. But, you know, have them take the additional training. There's a lot of additional trainings like we talked about on my dot scouting. They're really great trainings, they're really helpful. And even just Googling, like, how can I plan this such and such den meeting? right? Um, lots of great ideas out there. And of course, as always, like I, I've said before, you know, email us, you know, for some ideas, email, reach out to Josh. Josh, like you said, has been around for a long time. Um, even though he's a spring chicken, but he's been around for a long time. And, um, you know, and let's work together. And, and maybe, you know, it's helpful to get some of those folks on our membership committee, you know, and have, people really, you know, ideas like Tom's and, and, um, and, you know, the feedback that we get from you guys, you know, that's, that's the type of people that we need to help us on the, at the committee level and really spread that down to our districts and units. The idea is <laughs> does not go down on deaf ears. Just be aware of that. I take it, I write it down and I try to follow through <laughs> as much as I can. Yes, I agree. I feel the same way. Like, I don't ever feel like any one thing, you know, like any workshop is like, that's the best workshop. It could never get better. Like nobody can tell me what to do. Right. And uh, I just, I always am looking for ways to 
improve in general, but definitely improve and um, get the leaders, get you guys what you need. Um, you know, I love this stuff and I could talk about, obviously it's 820 right now. I'm taking up a lot of your time. I could talk about membership. I could talk about scouting for days. I love it. And I love talking to the leaders on the phone. We can even set up a Zoom together. Tom called me up and said, you know what? I need to talk through a few things. I'm having some trouble. I'll, I'll hop on a Zoom. I'll hop on a phone call. You know, that's the stuff I love to do. I love talking to the leaders. That's really my favorite thing, even when it's not all good. You know, so don't be afraid to reach out. Yeah, Cindy, <laughs> um, you're, you're, uh, are you operating out of the council office by Camp Carpenter now? Are you pretty much there a lot of the time? Or are you working mobile or what are you doing these days? Uh, this is my dining room right now. But <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so um, at the moment I'm at the member care center on Bodwell Road. It's right by Camp okay. Carpenter. Um, I'm there Thursdays and Fridays. Um, I am not there every day, um, but as the fall gets closer, I'll probably be there more often. Um, but if, if, you know, anyone wanted to meet me there and chat there or have a little tour of Camp Carpenter or whatever the case, I'm more than happy to do that too. I'm only like 30 minutes from there. It's not too bad. And if anyone orders flowers, Sydney, that needed it right away. You know, short term notice to let me know I can drive them out at any given time. Oh, thank you, Josh. I appreciate you know that. Too. Drive. So, if you know, uh, Josh loves to drive because he has a cool a Jeep. <laughs> yeah. well, a lot, like, I drive around, my kids are loan scouts, so we're neutral to the point. So, when we re recruit, we can't recruit for us, we recruit for everyone else. I travel. We have a rooftop tent, you know, we overland as well. So I'm hitting a lot of other communities. So if I can go to the Keen direction, you guys have a lot of classics and logging roads. I love going out there. Um, if it's way up in Centipede, I love going up there because there's some, uh, you know, I got all kinds of different logging roads up there and classics mm -hmm. roads I like going on. We're getting ready to go to uh, in the end of fall or the first couple of weeks of winter. Me and my son are going up towards the Arctic Circle. Um, to go see the Northern wow. Lights and we're training for that kind of stuff. So oh, we, that'll uh, be so uh, nice. That's wonderful. Um, but we can't do it at a troop level. We um, we have to do it with the Lone Scout program because I haven't seen a troop do that yet. But I'm always driving around. I love driving around, uh, especially in the woods than anything else. So if you guys have stuff and you need it right away, um, you tell me, hey, what day you need it? As long as I have kind of like a week or if it's like emergency i'll pretty much always drop what i'm doing that's also the thing i own my own business so i can't get yelled at by a boss <laughs> uh, except for me with my wife <laughs> yeah she's <laughs> the <a> boss <laughs> but i do go around um different districts um you know when uh, school starts up if you're at a different district round table whatever you'd probably be seeing me pop in quite often um i like to just show up unannounced um i do plan on hitting a lot of units um I got a lot over in the Mount Mananoc area that I plan on adding, as well as up in Centipede. Uh, you guys are a little bit more spread out, so it's I got to work my way that way. Oh, yeah. But like what Tom was saying, if you guys want somebody to pop in, I have no problem doing it. I love having fun. That's cool. I, I always have my Jeep full of something to do. I always know when Josh is approaching, his Jeep is pulling up. I'm like, oh, Josh is here. <laughs> I appreciate that because I'll definitely need um, probably some help with uh, delivering some flyers and materials, I have a feeling. Um, and I'm always um, happy to accept any assistance. <laughs> and we do have other things um, like Cindy, I just gave her yesterday. If you guys can't get the mobile base camp, I have some foot lockers to have uh, regatta kits. Basically, they're already pre-made boats has a water jug in it that can hold six uh, gallons of water and has one inflatable pump um, so you can inflate the regatta kit. All you need to provide is it takes about 10 feet so maybe two six foot tables or something to hold it on. So if you can't get the mobile base camp I do have some on the go membership stuff to do at a event. Um, you know, I can drop uh, drop it off at Sydney, or I can bring it to the council office, or I can, you know, if I get enough heads up, I can bring it to you. Um, and it's just it's all in one giant plastic uh, foot locker, very easy to do. Uh, but I know sometimes it's hard to get a mobile base camp. But if you're looking for something that's cub related, 
I know sometimes uh, it's hard to get that base camp because it's so booked in these long, especially going into the fall, because I know what we're, we have it in a couple of places all over the state. And I know we have two of them, but they're always getting booked pretty fast. Oh, people. my gosh. We have an event booked for, um, I know at least almost every weekend through August, from now through August, um, and uh, extra dates in between, too. It's like, so it's wonderful, but um, yeah, it's like my head spinning. I'm like, where is it today? Where, <laughs> where are we going? Um, so yeah. Kind of, uh, helps having a, uh, just a membership thing in a box, you know, obviously you provide your own individual unit stuff, but you know, having like a regatta, all it does is takes air and water. There's pre-made boats that have some kid funny stuff from like Nickelodeon and um stuff that was so fun. On it. and all they do is have a couple of the kids from a unit or just have them show how the regatta works say hey this is just part of it um i know i also have one that has a, a trial track those blue tracks with pinewood derby all you have to do is kind of tape the back end of one and have it go down to the other end of the uh it, i think it goes about 12 feet it has a couple pre-made crappy uh pinewood derby cars in my youth that still work that have not broke <laughs> Um, so I got one of those foot lockers. So if anyone wants one of those instead, but slowly building a few more just on the go membership, you know, things. Yeah, I had to utilize his, one of his kits, like he was saying, because um, we're going to national night out is August 2nd. And the mobile base camp is going to be in Hollis. Um, the other mobile base camp is going to be in Manchester. Hudson has an archery unit set up. Concord is doing the Rangata Regatta. And then we have soccer darts, I believe, going to Rochester. So we're going to be in all those spots on August 2nd, which is excellent, getting out to all those communities. Um, the National Night Out's are really popular family events. A lot of young kids go to those. Um, and uh, each of those um, leaders got membership kits um, filled with giveaways. Um, they, um, Standard Operating Procedures booklet with uh, the QR code in there, flyers, patches to give out, all that fun stuff. So, um, so uh, yeah, that was um, busy getting all those organized this week, but uh, we're good to go and excited to have everyone out in their community. So that's what we want. We need to have scouting visible and out there serving the communities and um, inviting more people in. Well, I really enjoyed tonight. I had kind of a crazy day. And this was actually a such a highlight of my day. And I, I'm not just saying that. This was actually such a highlight. So thank you guys so much for spending your evening with me. I know it's not a small feat. I know we're all giving up a lot of time to, to do this. And um, I really appreciate you. I, I hope you feel that. I really appreciate it because this was really like such a highlight to talk with all of you tonight. And I hope you all come back on August 25th. Um, excited for that one as we gear up for fall. I can't believe I'm even talking about that so crazy. But a uh, group hug, Josh says, yeah, we're doing a virtual group hug. I really do appreciate it because it really was a highlight and I truly mean that. Um, so for those of you that need to get going, it is 8.30. I promise you not all of them are this long, but I really, I really did enjoy the conversation. Um, usually we keep it to an hour and then I do, uh, if the conversation opens up, then those folks stick around, but you're always welcome. I won't be offended if you have to pop off at any time. I totally get it. We all have families and, and lives outside of scouting. I know it's shocking. Um, so thank you guys so much. Please email me anytime. Um, please come back again. Would love to continue the conversation. And those of you that want to hang on for the membership committee, I am going to stop the recording. So everyone hang on for a second. Thank you, everybody, for joining, and we'll see you August 25th. Yep.